So occasionally I get asked about what software do I actually use here on Linux? Now, most of the software that I run, it's for productivity use. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover all the software that I use daily while here on Linux um, doing productivity things, either writing code or um, you know messing with my configs or just whatever it is but i'm not going to now i'm not going to cover every single thing that i have installed on my system but i will cover most things that i'm sure most of you guys are interested in so let's go ahead and jump over to the desktop here all right so the first thing i want to cover is what terminal do i actually use well most days I just use whatever I have configured um, in my window manager. Right now I have it set. I believe this is Alacrity. But here lately, I have actually been using the Kitty terminal. So um, it's, it's either going to be Kitty or Alacrity, just depending on what um, what's in my config at that given moment. Um, the next thing I want to cover is file managers. Now, I'm not a big file manager person. Um, I never really have been. I do have a couple graphical file managers installed here on the system, but if I'm going to use a file manager, then more than likely I'm just going to pull up a terminal and I'm going to use the, com the command line as a file manager. But there are times when I do need a graphical file manager. So if I use a graphical file, file manager, then I'll just use Thunar. Um, and this is my Thunar. Um, and occasionally, I'll use DeerEd. Now, DeerEd is built into Emacs, and we'll get into Emacs here in a second. But this is, uh, this is DeerEd right here. And... If I'm working in Emacs, then there is a huge chance I'll just pull up DeerEd because it's there. I'm already in Emacs and it just, you know, it just works. And it's a really, really good file manager. Um, and I don't have to open up a terminal. I don't have to open up a, another application or anything like that. It's all right here. Good to go. For text editors... Now, this is a kind of a controversial one. And the reason I say that is because I actually use three different text editors. Okay, so my first text editor that I'm going to use, if I need to make a quick edit. So this is a text editor that I'm not going to use to write a whole config file or anything like that. This is just a simple edit text editor. And the one I like to use is NeoVim. Okay, so everyone knows about Vim and NeoVim at this point. But if I need to make a quick, quick edit, I'm just going to pull up a terminal and I'm going to pull up NeoVim, do my edits, and then get out. However, <laughs> if I am doing any type of big configuration so if i'm configuring the window manager if i'm configuring um if i'm writing some code that um i know the syntax and i don't need um i don't need help with or anything like that um or if i'm writing a dot org document um, i am in emacs and most of the time i am in emacs 95% of the time, 95% of the time, I've got Emacs pulled up on another uh, another workspace or something, and it's on one of my monitors, and it's just sitting there. Um, in fact, I would say Emacs is one of the first applications that I pull up as soon as my computer reboots. Um, I'm actually running the Emacs Damien right now. Um, this is the Emacs client, um, which makes Emacs start up a lot faster. But the reason I use Emacs is simply because it's good and it's it's really good 
Um, it can do a lot of different things, and um, I, I like it. And I've been configuring, I've been configuring GNU Emacs here um, for a uh, quite a while now, and I'm starting to get my configuration up and going. And uh, yeah, I really, really like it. So um, if we can pull up my my config here, but this is one of the best things I like about Emacs is, you know, I can write everything in org mode and it looks nice um and i can just comment the shit out of it if i want to and yeah i i really like the emacs workflow um one of the good things about emacs too even though i don't have it configured yet um but you can have a terminal in emacs um you can have you know i've already showed you the file manager here in emacs but um, i can use get in emacs there is a lot of different things that emacs can do and it can almost replace well it could replace 95 percent of the applications you probably use on a daily basis um now me personally i'm probably not going to do that i am going to install a terminal or vterm or whatever it is um but i mainly just use emacs as a text editor a file manager um and i'm going to play around with uh maggot so that that's one of the the big uh things about emacs is maggot so um i do want to check out that and uh you know configure that and get that all up and running all right so the final text editor that i use on a daily basis and this is gonna be this might actually piss some people off <laughs> Is Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code, there's no denying that it is one of the best text editors to use when writing code, right? It has everything built in. And it comes with everything. Like, it's got syntax highlighting. It has IntelliSense. Um, it's got all these pretty cool features built into it. And the only thing that you are required really required to do is install an extension um if you need specific like a specific um stuff like right here you see i have the php extension installed i have a javascript uh, extension html i've been working a lot here lately in web development so i install those extensions and those extensions you know those plugins they help you um and what's really nice about Visual Studio Code is it just does it does a lot of stuff well, and you don't have to configure it really. Um, you just install the install the application, install the extension for the programming language that you're working in, and you're good to go. You don't even have to install the extension if you don't want to. Um, and it just it's so good. The problem I have with writing code in NeoVim and Emacs is if you want to have a fully featured um, editor with those programs, you have to install an LSP. And LSPs, they're good, they work, um, but they are a pain in the butt to set up. And you sometimes you just want to be able to write the code. You don't want to have to fool with a million other different configurations in order to get work done. So I use Visual Studio Code whenever A, I need a lot of work done, and B, when I really don't know the program, programming language. Um, I don't know HTML all that well. I don't know CSS all that well. I use Visual Studio Code, and it really has kind of helped me understand uh, what I'm writing a lot better. How do I make these videos, right? Hey, um, w what's the process behind the videos? Well, as you might guess, I use OBS. Okay, this is my OBS screen right here. So, I make the videos using OBS. OBS is free software, of course. I use Kdenlove as my video editor. Um, 
if I'm here on Linux. Now, I do dual boot with Windows, like I, I've told you guys in the past. I have a beefy machine. Originally, this computer was just going to be a gaming computer, um, but my laptop died, so that's why I, I kind of run a dual boot system. Um, typically, I only get in Windows, honestly, to play games. Um, if I'm doing in, any kind of work or any thing like that, um, most of the time I'm here on Linux. Um, but if I'm doing a video here on Linux, then I'm going to use Caden Live as my video editor. Okay. And it's a good program. I, I really enjoy Caden Live. The problem I do have with Caden Live, though, is that um, it's a little buggy. And there's going to be crashes and everything. You do, you have to get into the habit of auto saving or saving your work a lot. Um, just because you don't, you don't want to, you know, get 50% done with your video editing stuff and then it crash on you and then, you know, you're kind of screwed. Now for audio, um, I do use um, Audacity. Um, the problem with this microphone that I have right now is that it doesn't have good bass support, okay? So my voice isn't... It doesn't have any bass to it whatsoever. Um, so what I do with this program is I import the video file pretty much and then I'll do um, an equalizer and filter and then I'll add a little bass to the uh, to the audio just to make my make the audio sound a lot better. Um, and this is the program I use for this. So I record the video on OBS. I import the video over here to Audacity. I do all my 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 base stuff. I export that audio, and then I import all of that stuff into Caden Live, and that's pretty much how I make the um, how I make the video. Um, for thumbnails, um, I'm not gonna lie. I use Adobe Express. I'm learning GIMP. Right now, I am learning GIMP, okay? But GIMP, um, GIMP is, a, you know, it's kind of a hard program to, to, to kind of master if you're not familiar with those type of programs. Um, and sometimes when I make these videos, I need, you know, I need, it, it, it already takes me, it can take me two to three hours to make a video, okay? So... Any kind of speed up that I can get or any kind of help um, to speed up the process, um, I take advantage of. Um, I'm trying to get away from using the Adobe Express, though, for my thumbnails. And I want to transition everything that I do um, over to just using open source software. So I think that wraps it up. As far as a window manager is concerned, uh, right now I'm in Xmonad. I've been writing an Xmonad config. Um, as you can see, it's it's going okay. I do need to fix up the bar here a little bit, but we got. I mean, we got some things going. We got uh, you know, I got scratch pad support. Um, and you saw my terminal and everything. And then I've got key cords and I got some stuff going on. Um, but most of the time. I'm running a, a tiling window manager. Okay, so I've got four tiling window managers installed here on the system. Um, I've got Xmonad, I've got Qtile, i3, and then I got that left WM window manager that I made a video on recently. Um, and 95% of the time now, um, I'm probably an Xmonad. If I'm not an Xmonad, then um, I may be an i3. It just kind of depends. Um, because I don't have Xmonad configured all the way yet, if for whatever reason I need a little bit more control over the windows, um, I'll go ahead and switch to a Qtile or, or i3. Uh, just simply because I don't have those key binds kind of set up here on Xmonad. Um, but once I get Xmonad set up, I, I think I'm just going to be on Xmonad until I decide to, to switch. Um, 
but yeah i mean everything works i really like it and um it's fast so the only thing i don't like is the configuration file because it's written in haskell <laughs> but uh yeah i hope that answers some of y'all's questions um about some of the software that i use i mean like i said um, I'll, everything that i showed you here today i use probably 98 percent of the time the only application that i don't use though that two percent is probably visual studio code and that's simply because i'm not constantly writing software okay um i only write software when um there's a project that, that i'm working on or um if someone needs help or anything like that um, but everything else that i showed you i use daily um Besides maybe my video editing software, um, and that's because I don't make videos daily. So, but everything else, it, yeah, it's it's pretty much um, a daily type of thing. So, if you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them down below. I'll get back to you guys. So, leave me a comment down below and tell me what software you guys run daily. And... Uh, until next time, I want you guys to take care, be safe, and peace. Bye, guys. Thanks.